Hey, hey, and welcome to the Mompreneur Experience Podcast, where we know that being a busy mom and an entrepreneur is overwhelming and isolating. But being a great mom doesn't mean you shouldn't get serious support to grow an amazing business. We believe with marketing that works for your business and the support to finally execute on what matters, we can win at business and life. This is your host, Camilla Jean, and I know that you're more than just a mom and you're more than just an entrepreneur. You're so much more. Welcome to the Mompreneur Experience Podcast. This is your host, Camilla Jean. As always, so excited to be here with you. Today, we are talking about one of the major pitfalls of being incredibly driven. If you're listening to this podcast, you're driven. You're driven to do more. You're driven to have a purpose, a calling, to probably create profits and revenue and bless your family and serve people, and solve problems. You are driven to do a lot of stuff. But sometimes I can relate that as a driven person, we spend a lot of time being super, super busy. And when we lift up our heads, we realize we haven't actually made progress where we wanted to make progress. And that's a problem. So that's what we're going to be talking about today. And because we're talking about this today, I wanted to let you know about two free resources that I have for you. So you can take your pick when you get to this site, you can, you know, use both, grab both depending on where you're at. So I have a free resource to help you actually implement and get way more productive in your life. And then I also have a resource to help you design a strengths-based business idea. So if you're new to this entrepreneurial thing, or if you don't think you have it quite right, that might be really great for you too. I think they're both super complimentary because if you're going to tackle something like starting a great business, you need to start mastering your productivity. This is something I obsess over. I research a lot. I love talking to people and experts about, and I'm continually challenging myself. I find things that work and I keep them. And if something's not working, I definitely challenge myself to find a better fit, do it better. So I would recommend you do the same thing. So you can snag those over at camella-jean.com slash free resource. And that link will be in our show notes. So make sure you snag those because I made them just for you. They're great worksheets. They walk you through the whole process, especially finding your strengths-based business. It's pretty in-depth. So snag those. But let's talk just a little bit more right now about being driven and some of the setbacks that we we run into because of that. So like I mentioned, if you're listening to this right now, you've got the bug, you're driven, you are not sitting around lounging on your couch. I know my kids have to kind of follow me around, right? When they're talking to me, sometimes I have to actually, you know, really check myself to actually sit down and focus on them because I have a hard time sitting still. The problem is if you don't have a really solid execution system or productivity strategy that you are implementing into your life and into your business, you're probably going to find that you're running yourself really ragged. You're working incredibly hard, but you're not getting the results you want. You're not reaching the goals you want. And that is just chaotic. It's overwhelming and it's stressful. And it's absolutely not what I want for you. I want successful, you know, life and successful businesses and successful careers. If that's the path you're on, that's what I want for you. And coaches come in and we help oftentimes, as you know, many of you know, I work as a coach with a lot of my clients. We help people have themselves run more productively, more efficiently. And we also help teams come up with really strategic and systematic execution systems in their business. So I know exactly what it takes to get this stuff done to implement it. But being driven and being super busy, I spent a lot of time researching and coming up with what works for me. You can definitely snag those execution strategies that I mentioned early, but I want to talk to you about some tips. I want to talk to you about the fact that you need to know your priorities. So if you've already lined out your business, you already have something going Make sure you've identified. People talk about goals. So you maybe have your goals already. You need to pull those out and look at them. But based on those goals, what are your priorities? Everything can't be your priority. I recommend breaking them down into quarters or maybe your priority for the year. Then you back into quarters. Then you back into months. And then you back into weeks. You got to know what your priorities are and you just can't have too many. I have two things that I'm really trying to tackle each day, a max of three. 
There's other things on my list, of course. I have other things that I know get done, but I need to know every morning when I wake up what the two things are that I, if I can tackle those things and they're directly related to my priorities, the things that I know move the needle towards my goals, then I know that I'm making progress. So you need to identify what those are and you need to be really clear also about the actions that you need to take in order to get those done. So that's the second part of this equation. And this is a high level overview, but I think it's going to get you pretty fired up and it's going to give you some real good clarity on how to be thinking about this. It's the mindset of your productivity. So according to these actions, these actions need to be repeatable actions that directly relate to moving you closer to those goals or the priorities. That's why it helps if maybe you can pull those back, break them down. If you have annual goals and you can break them down into quarterly goals or even monthly goals, it's a lot easier to identify the specific actions that you need to be taking on a daily basis in order to reach those goals. Oftentimes, depending on our roles and our businesses or our strengths, the role that we really try to hold close and dear, they may be different you know, throughout the year, or we may find that certain ones, certain actions, certain repeatable actions actually stay consistent throughout the entire year and they need to be a cornerstone in our schedule. So after you've identified these things, and let me give you an example of a repeatable action. So if you are a salesperson or you know that sales is super important in your business. So a lot of us really hate that these days. Everybody gets kind of tripped up into thinking that all I have to do is marketing. And you guys know I love marketing, but I love sales too. And I can just do marketing. I can just have an online presence and people are going to stumble across me and I'm going to gain business. I really recommend, and I can probably come up with a way for almost any business to implement an actually proactive sales strategy. So if you are doing sales in your business, and quite frankly, I'm a firm believer that if you're not selling, you're not making money, and you need to be thinking about how you're filling that pipeline. But let's use them as an example, because I think they're so critical to business in general. If your role or part of your role is sales in your business, and if you're an early stage entrepreneur, it is a part of your role in the business. If you have a goal of doubling your revenue or reaching a certain number in sales that you've never met before for a specific new product or service that you're launching or coming up with, or maybe it's an existing one, but you're really recommitting to it and you're setting a goal that stretches you further What is it going to take to get that done? And if you know, for example, that you need to identify really great potential clients for this, and you know that you can reach out to them personally and make a relationship, form a bond, and take them through a customer path that's going to lead them to a sales, you need to probably block out one or two half days a week for researching prospects because you need to keep that part of your pipeline full. And the better you research and the better you refine who you should be targeting, then the better your close rate's going to be. Another thing that if your main purpose, your main goal in your business to try to grow it happens to be sales as well, might be that you block out two hours every single day for making those calls to people, whether they're following up on people that have shown some interest Maybe it's people that have come in and if you have a small business and you're using all the digital marketing strategies that we talk about a lot, if you have a small business and people are opting in, you should be contacting them. I mean, if they seem really interested, if they've been on your list, if they've opted into something you're excited about, contact them, reach out to them if that's where you're at in your business. And if you can't, then you're using, you know, great email strategy and stuff like that. But spend a certain amount of time, whatever works and is right for your business, doing that. If training maybe new hires is really super critical in your role, maybe same concept. You need to block out maybe two half days or one half day reading and getting caught up on potential new strategies or improving the training system that you have in place. And then you know that you need to spend maybe two hours each day or one hour each day, or maybe it's four hours each day whatever it is for that role, actually training and interacting and getting feedback about what's working so that you can be really, really good and effective at that role. So whatever your role is, what are the repeatable action steps that you can implement 
to you know reach those revenue goals or get X number of people trained so they're getting a certain type of result. Whatever it is, make sure you pick action things that are super, super relatable and they are going to push you towards your goals, especially if you're tracking them. You have to be tracking on a weekly basis these actions. Make sure you're doing them. You're going to see some trends. When you're doing what you're supposed to be doing, you're going to see results coming in. If you're getting away from these repeatable actions or they're not the right actions, you're going to see that too, but you're never going to know unless you're tracking it. So it's really important that you have a system to track it, that you guys have it documented. Maybe you're using a dashboard or a spreadsheet, something to help you track it. Now, if in your business you have a team that is part of this and you have a group of people and they're all kind of directly related to that end priority, that end goal, you want to make sure you have a weekly meeting where you're actually, everybody's talking about where are they at, what are their repeatable actions, are they getting them done, what's getting in their way, how can you work around that, how could you do them better, you're sharing wins, those types of things. That's super critical. For a lot of us, it's just us. And it's a matter of dedicating a small period of time to evaluating how our weeks went. Did we block out that time? Did we do those repeatable action steps? And we are all going to have times that we fall short and we don't get them done. There are so many distractions in life, but that's why you got to be intentional and you got to put them into a intentional execution plan. I like to think of an execution plan for me looks like an ideal week. I have an ideal week schedule. I have core things blocked out on certain days. I have my morning rituals, my afternoon rituals, which all include some links to those episodes because I've talked about those on the podcast. Those stay there every single day. And I have my repeatable actions that move my business forward built into the ideal week as well. So I hope you found this helpful. I'm going to include lots of links in the show notes to some of the other episodes that talk about some of the things we talked about, the rituals, the ideal week, those types of things. But I really want to challenge you to think about what repeatable actions can you take in your business that actually get you towards those goals that you want to reach. If you can really directly link those two, you can start moving mountains. And that is exactly what I want for you. So make sure that you check out the show notes and don't forget those free resources that I created for you too. You can find those at camella-jean.com slash free resources. All right. Can't wait till next time. I hope that you get on in touch with me. Find me on social, find me on Facebook, join the mompreneur experience club on Facebook and tell us what repeatable actions you are implementing in your business. 